This morning, uh, we are talking about a call to return to the former glory. Uh, we will be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and uh, some few uh, books from the Bible. Uh, a call to return to the former glory. The word glory, glory is highly renowned or honor that is won because of notable achievements. Let me say, let me use the word to become famous. Glory. Because of what you've been able to achieve, you are glorified. The good example to use on this, we can talk about uh, Jacob in the book of Genesis chapter 31 verses 1. Give me Genesis chapter 31 verses 1. Genesis chapter one verses one, uh, chapter thirty one verses one says, "Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob had taken all that was our father's, and from 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 what was our father's, he has gained all this wealth." Now Jacob had lots of wealth, and this is. A confirmation of the glory that he had that he was so wealthy because of what he took from Laban and that is glory uh, glory is magnificence or great beauty and this can be either uh, can be externally and internally In this, I want us to read the book of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, whereby we both, uh, we all see the magnification of this glory of God in the lives of man. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Praise the Lord. God made man in his likeness and image. That is the glorification of, uh, of the glory, of, uh, the, the manifestation of the glory, or uh, the glory of God in man. man cre uh, God created man. That is something, uh, something that we can say, creating only. When he created man, he could just uh, put breath in, in him and, he, uh, and become a living being. But the part of glorification, we say, he did not only create him, he created him in his own image. So the image of God is the glorification that we see in man, the glory of God upon man. And even the likeness. And in man we see both external glorification and internal glorification. External is about the appearance. The likeness is also about the appearance. When I seek God and where I can find God, I can only be able to see you and see God. Now, internal 
glorification is about the character of man. And in this, I want us to talk about what does God like and what does he dislike. God is pure and holy. God walks in righteousness and God is perfect. And uh, through these characteristics of God, these characteristics have, ha, have been put in uh, humans so that they will be exactly like God himself. Praise the Lord. When God created man, he deposited everything that he wanted in man so that God will be glorified in him. Doing good, walking in righteousness, and avoiding evil. But when man sinned, something happened. The glory in the image did not disappear. You still remain a human being in the likeness and the image of God. But the glory in the character changed. In Romans chapter 3 verses 23, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when man sinned, that, uh, the, the, being, uh, falling short of that glory made him be sent out of the garden of Eden. He stopped enjoying the privileges that he enjoyed before. In the Garden of Eden, there was protection, provision, and all that man needed for him to be alive. But because of sinning, something happened. I want us to read. Um, mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 3 verses 22. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Just that part. Praise the Lord. When God created man, there is something that he wanted him to know. He wanted only man to know only good. To be good. And to live in his goodness. But when he sinned, he knew something else. He knew evil. And that is why God is saying that behold the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. The next verse. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he, he was taken from. Praise the Lord. Because of sinning and knowing evil now, he was sent out and he stopped enjoying what he enjoyed before in the garden of Eden. So when he falls short of the glory of God, And he knew evil. The separation between man and God made God send man out. To show that though he is in, still in the image of God, he cannot enjoy what he enjoyed before because now he has become sinful and disobedient. In the glory of God, there is enjoyment. The these things, uh, the, the provision and uh, being taken care of, everything is in the glory of God. When you, you, you stay in the will of God, when you, uh, yeah, before, before the fall, all these privileges was in man. Now, we have talked about Adam and Eve and what happened after that because he was chased out. 
when we go to the history of the lives of the Israelites, God saved them from, the, uh, from slavery, from uh, Egypt. And uh, they enjoyed security even when uh, he's uh, taking them to that journey to the promised land. He protected them. He fought for their for, he fought for, uh, for them. He gave them healing, gave them water in the wilderness and made ways where there were, there were no ways for them. They enjoyed that glory because God had chosen them. So, now in this part that we want to look at in the book of Isaiah, because we see them coming and reaching to the promised land, but they forgot what God had done for them. Let us go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1. In Isaiah chapter 1, I want to read verses 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I read and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ha! A sinful nation. A people, f a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. It begins by saying, the Lord nurtured them. The Lord protected them. The Lord took a very good care of them. And that is why I had to go through the process where they came from, what Lord, the, the Lord did for them, and how they forgot what God did for them. They went against the will of God. They disobeyed and they were sinful and evil before the presence of God. They forgot the glory that they shared with Elohim and what the Lord did for them. And this is what we do as Christians. Very in, in, in our daily lives, when we gave our lives to Christ, there are many things that the Lord did for us. He changed us to become Christians. From our former lives, where we were sinful. He took our sinful nature and gave us the righteousness of Christ. And from then, the Lord has been protecting us. He has been providing for us. He has been fighting our battles. He has been everything to us. But many times we forget where we have come from. Many times we forget what the Lord has done for us. We go our own ways. We hear of this saying that Mungu saidia anayeji saidia, which is not true. And when you hear somebody say that, there is something that you want to do that is not right. Praise the Lord. Now, we forget everything and, be, and we want to act on our own. We forget that yesterday the Lord, the Lord saved me from this danger. Even this mountain, the Lord can enable me to go over it. Praise the Lord. Now we want to maneuver our own ways to tackle our own problems, of which we cannot do by our own strength. There is nothing we can do by ourselves. Now, Isaiah is saying that these people have become sinful and evildoers. They are so corrupt, of which we see in our daily lives as, as Christians and even in Kenya. We see corruption. 
we see people doing evil for others, plotting to, to harm others for their own gains. When uh, Isaiah is talking about Judah and Jerusalem on this matter, these are people who know God. They knew their roots. They knew where they came from. They knew that God is holy and righteous. They knew everything. And we Christians, we know everything. We know that our Father is holy. We know that there are things that we are not allowed to do, but we still do them. In the name of the blood of Christ is still cleansing us. Praise the Lord. We do these things knowing so that we can go back and repent. God is so merciful. When you repent, he will forgive you. Now, verses uh, 5 says, Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. This shows the repercussions of sin. They have gone against the will of God. Now they are being punished. They are facing the consequences of what they have done. This means that sin is punishable. When you go against the will of God, you will be punished. And there are things that we go through, and when we look at them, uh, when we look at them, we will say, it is not in vain. There must be something. Do we remember the story of Jonah? When he's running from the presence of God, he's avoiding to go and take the message where he has been, he has been sent. When he chooses to run to Tarshish, then the consequences come. And they are asking, Whose fault is this? Why is this happening to us? There are many things that we go through, then we begin asking ourselves some questions. Why is this happening? What have I done that I'm not supposed to do? And now, Israel are facing the consequences. From, uh, I want to read verse 6. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but breezes and sores and raw wounds. They have not pressed out. They are not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. That is the punishment they are going through. Some things that are so painful because of the mistakes that we commit each and every day. So, this is what the Lord says to them. When you come to me, that is verses 12 of, when you come to, to, to appear before me, who has re required of you the trampling of my courts? In the garden of Eden, Adam was sent out of the, Eden, uh, of the garden. Meaning that that is the separation that comes after sin. And in this part, we see that when they have sinned, even when they come to worship, when they come to worship, God will not hear. God will not see. And in verses 15, he says, When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. God will not hear. He's telling Judah and Jerusalem, I will not hear. Even when you lift up your hands, I will not see these hands. Christians, we know all these things. We know we are not supposed to go sinning. We are supposed to be holy as our Lord and our Father is holy. We are supposed to avoid sin because we always want the presence of God to dwell in us. 
We want to walk according to the ways of God. We want to see the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. How do we see them when we are sinful? How do we get answers to our prayers when we go against the will of God? That means we have been distanced from the presence of God. The glory of God has fallen short. Sometimes we pray so hard and things are not changing. The mountains are not moving. Why? We need to ask this question. Why is this not happening? If God has promised, when you call me, I will hear. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Why is this happening? Why is this mountain not moving? Why the situation is not changing? We need to ask ourselves. So that when we retrace our steps, then we will come in the right way and move according to the will of God and things will change for good. Praise the Lord. Therefore, this morning, this is what the Lord says. That when you come with all this, the Lord doesn't want. He don't want you to come here, call upon his name, yet you have things that are behind you. You have gone against the will of God. You have uh, deviated and then you want to lift your hands. You know, if I pray and uh, tell God many things, or I use the Bible, I quote everything according to his promises. Yes, these promises are there. But if I am sinful, let me tell you, the prayer of the sinner is noise before the Lord. The reason why God will not hear us when we call is when we have sin in our lives. We have to repent and go back to the right ways so that God will hear us, God will answer us, and we will return to that glory that he called us to. This is a call to return to the former glory. Whereby, when you were born again, you were right with God. When you told, when you said, Father, I need you in this area. The Father came and he answered that prayer. Let us read verses 19 says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Verses 20, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah is telling uh, the children of Israel, if they are willing and obedient, I want to, uh, let me go back to verses 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red, red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Praise the name of the Lord. This is, Isaiah is calling them to return in the right ways. And he's telling them how to go about it. Verses 16, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. That is what they need to go doing before the presence of God. Avoiding evil, cleansing themselves. And because the Lord has promised when they come and re repent before him, he will forgive them. He will cleanse them. If they are willing to come, they will enjoy in the presence of God. They will enjoy the glory that they enjoyed when they were right with God. And this is what, is, uh, is what the Lord is telling us today. That we should return to where we were before. The image that God wanted us to be. The image, the, the, the character that God wanted us to bear. The good character. Avoid evil. Uh, stop, stop everything that uh, is wicked before the, uh, the, the presence of God. And 
I want to say this. The way we relate with each other. If I plot evil against my brother, that means that I want to destroy I want to destroy the glory of God upon my brother. And also that means I hate him. And all these characters are not in Elohim. These characters are from the evil one. We need to return. We need to return to the former glory. Whereby we lived in peace with one another. We loved to see our brethren succeed. Without envying them. And without trying to covet or to, do, to, to structure some evil tactics so that we can get what they have. There is this, uh, uh, this kind of prayer most of us make. When you see a beautiful uh, or a, a machine pass, this beautiful cars. We are Christians, eh? And we know how to possess things. I possess that in the name of Jesus. Yes, you have possessed. Do you know how that car came to that person? Do you know the price that that person paid for them to get, to get that what you're coveting? Stop possessing things that belong to others. Ask God to give you yours. Because he's able. He owns everything, including you. So when you go before the Lord, knowing that you're worthy and you're pure in heart, and you, you, you're free, you're in that glory that God created you to be, in that place, you can enjoy the good of the land. We want to enjoy all these things. The only thing is that we need to avoid this evil. We have to walk according to our fathers. We see that this, image, this, uh, this character that came and diverted man from the... we may have life and have it abundantly. This life that is abundantly is running away from us because we have become sinful. We can never enjoy the peace that we, we used to enjoy we, we used to enjoy there before. Because now sin 
as families are destroyed relationships are dying when we make our relationship with Elohim right then every other thing will be okay everything will be good we will get the healing that we desire we will be able to achieve everything that we want to achieve in the presence of God we do not have power of our own we cannot do anything to change situations but God who knows every situation God who knows what happened how it happened and what will come after that he knows so let us leave it to God when you give God that opportunity he will handle everything and then you will continue to enjoy the good of the land do we want to enjoy the fruits of our labor do we want to see our our families flourish do we do you do we want to see this achievement of every goal we have set we only need to go according to the ways of God let us return to this place this former glory because that is where we are supposed to be we are supposed to be there we are not supposed to continue wailing in sicknesses and diseases we cannot afford to continue seeing marriages break mpaka zile za christians these things happen when we go away from the presence of God in the presence of God there is unity in the presence of God there is love in the presence of God in the presence of God is where the glory of God is let us return to the former glory and everything else will be okay a musician sang a song and said when the lord is on the throne everything is better the lord dwells in the throne of our hearts when the lord is in control when we have that glory of elohim and the characteristics of yahweh then we will not cry we will enjoy but if you refuse and rebel you shall eat you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the lord has spoken that is the punishment of what sin does the punishment the consequences of sin there must be something there must be a result of every decision that you make whether the right choice or the wrong choice you make there will be consequences so can we take a step and return to this glory church today i want to tell you the reason why there is disunity even in the churches today is because we all want to do our own things we want to we just want to bear the name of Christ i am a christian but do you live like christ how we relate with our neighbors there at home even on uh, 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 in our places of work that will give us to to know whether we are doing the right things or we are doing the wrong things so please we need to portray this image and characteristics of Yahweh everywhere we go you should not live in darkness or when you when you are in a corner alone you do your own things and when you come in the light you say something else do you
returning to the former glory. A call to return to the former glory. This glory is all that we need. We are crying today in Kenya that there is so much violence, there is so much uh, uh, corruption, the, the, the economy is so harsh. We are crying, but do we know there is reasons why these things happen? In Christianity, when you see you, when you see yourself go uh, through some conditions, situations that are not moving, even when you pray, ask yourself, why? What am I doing that I'm, I'm not supposed to do? Then, when you redress yourself, things will change. When you return to the right ways, everything will be well. Let us return to the former glory. This is for the Christians. I want to say this. When you are not born again, the character, the internal glorification of Yahweh in your life is not there. Because the character has not been impacted in you. So sinning will become something usual. You can do anything, anywhere without anybody questioning you. But when you become a Christian, when you become a Christian, you behave like Christ. You behave like Yahweh because you need to glorify him. So in this I say this. Salvation. Salvation is what you need. Salvation is what we need. If you're not born again, you need to be born again. So that you can live for the glory of God. We have seen what Israelites and Adam and Eve enjoyed in, that, in what we have talked about. We have seen what they went through when they sinned against God. And in this, we can identify ourselves in the lives that we live. So, let us return. It is a call to return to the former glorification. I want us to stand up. <clears throat> I want us just to surrender before the Lord. To go before the Lord in prayer. We need to cleanse ourselves. We need to remove the evil that is within us. We need to repent because we want God to answer us when we pray. We want God to heal us. We want God to restore us to that former glory where we used to enjoy, we want to enjoy once again. You know yourself very well. I want us to go before the Lord in prayer and tell him, Daddy, we have sinned against you and we repent this morning. We want to come back to that glory. We want to come back to that place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah Keteyebe Bosiasi. You who sees the heart, O oh Lord. 
May you have your way this morning. May you have your way this morning, my master. Redeemer Lord Jehovah, King of glory. In, Ro uh, in Romans chapter 3, verses 23, you say that, Lord Jehovah, all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. That, Lord, where we have fallen short of your glory through our evil acts, Abba Father, this morning we repent. This morning, that we repent, Abba Father. Father, Lord, cleanse us by the blood of Christ. Make us clean, Jehovah. Have your way in us, Abba Father. Redeem our Lord Jehovah, King of glory, today we move out of our wickedness, Abba Father. And I pray that, Lord Jehovah, King of glory, may you restore us in your presence. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Redeemer.